Hey, today I'm going to be teaching you folks how to read data from a CSV file. So probably you're more familiar with Excel sheets and actually there are some R libraries to handle Excel files. But CSV is a kind of a standard in data science and we're going to be working a lot with CSV files. So in this video I'm going to teach you a couple of tricks to import and inspect CSV files and more importantly how to create one from a data frame. So here we go. As usual, we're going to start with our studio. We're going to create a new R script. And there are a couple of ways to import the data file. Actually, three ways, but I'm going to teach you about a couple of them. So the first one is a visual one. So here in this environment panel, you have this, this tab here. So if you click in import data set, you can use different uh, formats. As I was saying, you can actually import from Excel but we're going to import a text file. So let's click here, and then we're going to import this data file, which is called usecar.csv. Now, the, the good thing with this visual is that you can actually take a look at the file. So as you can see here, this is why it's called CSV, the C is for comma. So you have different fields separated by a comma, and this is the header, and then the value. So the first, the first entry in this data set is this one. So year 2011, model self, and so on and so forth. So if you remove this thing, if you say that this is not the header, actually it considers that the first line is also part of the data. And as you can see here, it creates new names from V1 to, in, in this case, to V6. So, but in this case, we have a header. So let's plug this here. Imagine that you have a data set that instead of having commas, you have semicolons, then you can change you can change this by, by different separators, okay? So now if you import, okay, then you, had, you see a couple of things. First is the real syntax, and this is going to be our second method, which is an invoking the function read.csv. And then we have this command here that is called view, and I'm going to talk about this later. So let's close this for a while. And now the second method is, again, let's call, let's create a new data frame called data, and then we're going to invoke the function read CSV. Again, if you press F1, remember that you have here all, all the help that you need and some examples in the end. In this case, I'm going to, to you introduce it manually. A good thing is that, for instance, if, if you here press tab, okay, between quotation marks, then it lists all the, all the files that you have there. And actually you can start writing for instance, use and then tab. And as you can see here, it complete, uh, completes automatically all the files starting with use. Okay, this is pretty handy. Okay, now if we don't add additional parameters, then it's going to assume that you have headers, that the, the um, standard default separator is a comma and so on and so forth. Okay, now we have a couple of data frames, one that we have created visually and the other hand that we have created manually and actually we're going to inspect them and here is where this command view is really handy so view data re remember control return it executes this line and this opens a new tab in this in this part of our studio and as you can see here we have four so sorry six columns and i don't know 150 rows okay again if we repeat the same with the other data frame. In this case, remember, it was called use cars. Use cars. As you can see, it's the same data file. So the reason why is that we have imported the same data file using the same syntax, okay? Using the visual one is more, I would say, simple, but in the end, you have to learn the syntax because in a couple of weeks, you're going to be programming really I would say long script, so this is going to be part of your script. There are different ways to inspect a data frame. We've seen this one, which is pretty useful. Actually, you can actually order by, for instance, by year or by, or by transmission, color, whatever. Okay, this is like an Excel spreadsheet. But all the things that you can do is the command, for instance, str. str somehow translates this object, this data frame, to uh, something that you can read. So if you write str data, 
okay, you have a summary. It tells you that this is a data frame. This is basically the same as the command that we saw the other day. If you write down class data, then you see this, this data frame. But the good thing with str is that it tells you the class, but also the number of lines, the number of columns. And in, in each case, it tells you you have a data frame. One of the elements is here, it's an integer one. It takes these values, okay? Th these are the first ones. This is the same actually if we use head data we're going to see the first six elements of, of the table so this is another way to grasp the, the contents of this data frame okay so we have seen view str and head okay you also have tail if you want to see the tail of the data frame and again you see the last six entries of this data frame okay the last one the last comment that i would like to talk to you about now is summary if you write down summary and then your data frame this is really interesting because it tells you for numerical values it tells you the minimum value the maximum the median the mean and the first and third quantile okay this is pretty interesting if you have factors categorical values like transmission it tells you that in, for for the 150 elements you have 128 um, factors that are auto type and the, the other 22 are manual type so this is again this is pretty useful and um, whenever you have some doubts about the contents of your data frame i suggest to you that you can use view which is the visual way to inspect the file but summary is is king in the, in this in this context finally a couple of things now we have seen how to read a csv file and then we have to learn how to write a CSV file. So the syntax is write CSV. And now you have to write down your data frame, in this case data. And now the, the name of the new data set that you want to create. So new data frame dot CSV. Okay, if you don't say anything else, it's going to, it's going to assume the default value. So if, again, if you press F1, you see all the parameters that you have here. Okay, now let's run this one. And now, if you go to the files panel, this is not here. Why is that? Because I have said before, you have to choose in which in which directory you're working on. Now I'm working in a different directory like this one. So one thing that I can do is save this in the directory that I want. And now you see this, this new DF CSV file here, okay? So this is pretty simple. And now to end this video, my favorite trick, you can use re read CSV with an URL, which is a web page. Let's go here and imagine that you know the direction of a file. In this case, let's try to find usecars.csv. And then Google tells us that this is a store in GitHub. So let's press here. This is, this is not the web page in which we can import, but if you click here in raw, okay, you see actually the, the real data frame. So if you copy this address, this URL address, copy, and then you paste it here. Let's call this new data frame. And as you can see here, I have just copied this URL, and then I have a new data frame. You can see here is new. And if you view this one, again, you have the same data frame. So this is pretty awesome because you can start your data analysis instead of downloading the data file you can do this automatically this is very handy these days because with this COVID-19 stuff there are so many open repositories and many people are trying to analyze this in real time so instead of downloading the data frame every day you can read the most updated version of, of this data file okay and that's all for today